welcome back to day two of a conversation that we're having this week for Rap Week, White Ribbon Against Pornography, about pornography and the dangers of pornography. I am Sherry from Life Plan. I'm here with Linda and Greg once again, and we are wearing our white ribbons, and we're going to talk a little bit more. <laughs> if you don't have a white ribbon, stop by either Life Plan location yes. and get one. It's a great way to help raise awareness. If someone asks you a question, why are you wearing a white ribbon? you can start talking to them about the dangers of pornography. And we're gonna give you some tools to help you be able to do that this week and these, this time together. So today, we're gonna to talk specifically about the impact of pornography on relationships. So guys, can you speak into that a little bit? How does it impact relationships? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, one of, the, one of the things you discover is that, um, you know, last time we're talking about men, but it can be boys as well, it can be teenagers. When they have been exposed to a lot of pornography, you, you discover that they a lot of times have trouble just relating in, in having conversations with, with women, with, with you know, people of the opposite sex. And, and that, there's carryover. There's this idea when you're, when you're exposed to a lot of pornography, um, just this concept, your view of, of women, if you're a guy, begins to really, really change from this is really not a person. This is just a person um, that is just available to just meet all of my needs and fulfill all of my fantasies. So mm -hmm. it really, it really can damage that. And then you get it. You talk about a marriage relationship and how it can impact that. Um, it, you, you just have a, a recipe for for disaster when it comes to that. But. Um, yeah. Lyndon, how would you yeah. weigh into that? I, I have an illustration about this in speaking to young men uh, at Remade or other seminars that we offer. I use this illustration and I tell them how uh, uh, if you have a wrong view of sex and how porn does that to you. I tell them, okay, let's pretend you guys will be in a tournament six years from now. I tell the young men. And let's say that you have to pra that tournament is football. You have to practice six days a week or four days a week, whatever. So four days a week for the next six years, you practice football. You learn the skills, you understand football and so forth. So six years from now, all of a sudden, when the six years end, um, we go to the tournament and somebody changes the tournament from football to golf. How frustrated would you be? And you'd be extremely frustrated. You, and so the, that's what happens when boys view sex from pornography for the next six years of their young teenage life. And when they get married, it's all different. And, and it, it really causes a lot of frustration in the relationship. You're starting from the wrong foot in, in, in your relationship. There'll be frustration from both sides. And... Um, and, and, and porn is selfish oriented. It's not the sexual relationship that we're supposed to have in a marriage context. So it really yeah. damages our, our views of sex and for these young men. And, and it's important that we tell them about the dangers of porn. Yeah, you know, if you think about just relationships in general, just any relationship, usually there are problems in any relationship when the expectations are not met. Right. And so that's just that can be just in basic communication. Yeah. You know, if I if I say I'm going to meet Lyndon for coffee at a place at 10 a.m. and I don't show up, um, and then I do it again, and then I do it again, yeah. Lyndon will not. He'll he'll begin to not trust me because his sense of expectation that Greg's going to show up is not going to be there. And just think about how that's compounded when we're talking about the area of sexuality and our understanding of what the sexual experience is actually going to be like. So One more addition there, Greg, Greg um, is that um, pornography today is very, one, uh, there's, there's a lot of rape, there's a lot of abuse, there's a lot of bondage, and there's a lot of uh, violence. And that's not what sex is, but that's the sex that's being portrayed in pornography. And we need to stop that. We need to, people to be aware of that because that's not what sex is. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah. especially talking about as we go into that, you know, our young young men who are being raised on porn, mm -hmm. if you want to say it that way, who are seeing porn and getting their view of sex from that bondage and yeah. the stuff that they see, they're taking that into their relationships and that's what they're expecting from their girlfriends yes. or spouses. Yes. And, yes. you know, it does set up that date rate, the yes. whole thing on that. And, yes. you know, all those expectations that are there aren't getting 
I mean, that, and I do want to speak also, because you talked a little bit about expectations. Yeah. And so I want to speak a little bit about the, something called emotional porn, mm -hmm. which is kind of affects women more because, you know, studies show that, that guys, most men are turned on by sight, women not so much, but we see, or they see in the studies that what happens in the brain of guys when they look at porn is very similar to what happens in the brain of women when they read romance novels that are meant to arouse them sexually. And the same thing happens there where they're getting addicted to those romance novels and they're getting this fantasy world and getting expectations that aren't being met when they get into the relationship, it can't match up to that person in the romance novel. So that's also yeah. an issue. You could, I think that those romance novels can be considered as pornography as well. So we need to be careful that we are, in all of our view of sex, everything we do with sex, that it's based on the gospel and God's view of sex. That's what needs to be coming out. Yeah. You know, you think also just about the nature, the nature of sin or the anatomy of sin. Uh, what sin does is it promises to deliver way more than it can actually give. <laughs> and any of us that have sinned, and the Bible tells us, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, right? Everybody has had this struggle. Um, you know, think, just, just think about that then in relation to uh, the issue of pornography. It's setting, it's setting us up that this is the way it's supposed to be. It promises to deliver all of this amazing... Um, you know, feeling and, and pleasure and, and things related to that. But um, usually, if you talk to guys that have really been into this, um, you know, when they click off the website or they stop looking at the pictures or the videos or whatever, you know, the reality is, is they, is they just really feel horrible. Right. And that, that is the real, kind of the, the, the dirty underbelly of what we're really talking about here. But, you know, I want to leave you guys with a little bit of hope because... Um, remember that we, we serve a God who is a hope-giving God. And at Life Plan, you know, our, our, our big mantra is we want to uh, bring people into a, a, a life of hope and to live a hope-filled life. And so the passage that came to my mind was Romans chapter 15, verse 13, where uh, the Apostle Paul says these words, and, and they're good words for us today. It says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, we're going to be meeting again tomorrow. We hope that you'll join us. And as we progress throughout the week, we're hopefully going to point you to some great resources and great ideas of how we can overcome this, many of us that are struggling with this. But I think one of the keys is one of the things that Paul writes here, by the power of the Holy Spirit, God has got to be involved. So we will see you tomorrow.